Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. So, starting off this video by building Russ's intake tube and nuking my finger in the process, if you guys caught that during the pie cut tacking portion. Right now I'm obviously taking a walk down the driveway as my buddy Logan from Defined Auto Works brought over a new toy of his that is super cool and I can't wait to go take a look at it. So this is the new toy and there's the man behind it right there. So Logan's been into old semi-tractors for a while and you've had how many at this point in time? Five. Five? And this is the newest member of the fleet. So it's obviously a cab over, which is super cool. And it's what, a twin charge Detroit that runs it? Yeah, AD92, so it's got the blower, which is to keep it basically running, and then a turbocharger on top. So Sweet. It has turbo and supercharger. Absolutely. Really turbo blower, yeah. I like the turbo part the most. Yeah, the turbo <laughs> part is top pretty awesome. But this thing is absolutely beautiful, super cool, makes all the right noises. And I am stoked that you got yourself another one. Yeah, yeah, it's been a little while. I kind of got out of it for a couple of years and then the bug bites you again and you sort of have to just, you know, buckle down and get another one. And Absolutely. So this time around, I tried to find one that's a little more complete without needing a lot of work. So it's really, I bought it looking like this and uh, just had to do various odds and ends, you know, fix some leaks and kind of go through and change the oil, put proper fluids in it, but it really wasn't... Not too bad. A massive project like I'm used to. So sure. <laughs> yeah, you don't need another RX-7, you already have the RX-7. Yeah, already have the RX-7. <laughs> I see you have approximately 95 batteries back here. Yeah, yeah 94. 94, okay. Yeah. And then, you can see everything up in there. Super cool, super neat stuff. This is such a departure from what I'm used to with with uh, two Jay Z stuff and everything, but yeah, man, yeah. is that cool? That's the right way to do it. Just, just go completely off the beaten trail. <laughs> of course. Get the experience something different. There's no rotors in this one. No rotors in this one. <laughs> It'll hopefully be hauling rotary stuff, but it won't have There you go. In it, so there you go. Still rotary related. Yes. I'm assuming this rail over here is good to grab onto. Yep. Cool. And then I usually just grab that A pillar right there once you get a little way up. Yeah, right. Oh. Now you have seat. I do have a seat. Yep. This is nice. Is it pretty comfortable? Not bad. Yeah. Is it roll down window or what? An uh, electric window. Oh, nice. Do you want it more down? Yeah, let's just go the whole way down. You're so far over there. I know. <laughs> I'm so lonely. And Logan actually sold his house. He lives in here now. <laughs> That's where I sleep at night. Yep. And, uh, you know, sometimes I have people visit. <laughs> Here we go down the road. This, first, this is my first time in a big rig like this as well. That's pretty cool. This is, this is really, really cool. Probably what double that in torque if I were to guess. Oh, yeah, triple. I think it's uh, 1700. No kidding. Yeah. It's living out a childhood dream at this point in time. This yeah. is super cool. goes the tricky part of this where hey man you're all the way down there the door handle is actually kind of hidden right here ah yeah. yeah i wouldn't have gotten that <laughs> so now i mean i have to try not to fall out of this thing yeah, we'll go one step down one right there and then over here oh there we are 
That was just up there. Hey man, thank you very much for the ride. That was pretty incredible. Like I said, childhood. I need, need to get that box. That wasn't the smartest thing. But that was like a childhood dream that I've always wanted to go for a ride in something like this. And to finally have that opportunity was pretty damn cool. Yeah. Was to make childhood dreams childhood. Yes. <laughs> That's what you're here for, right? That's what I'm here for. <laughs> After yesterday's fabrication on Russ's car and going for a ride in Logan's semi-truck, it's now time to weld Russ's intake tube together. So I have the whole thing set up here. You can hear that it is purging currently. And what I've done is also tacked on the, or another section of five inch titanium straight tubing just to act as kind of a buffer for this last weld right here. Last weld from the perspective when it's installed. And I can also section a little piece of this off, off of this straight tube, I should say. When it comes time to finally part this, as it would be nice to have a little bit of straight tubing on the end of this, just for the clamp for the filter to be able to grab onto it a little bit better. So finger, it's obviously covered in a glove right now, but the <laughs> barbecue yesterday or the finger barbecue, no harm, no foul, all is well. And the nice thing when you burn yourself like that, it kind of nukes the nerve endings. So the pain is very short lasted. But with all that being said, I'm going to let this purge out for a little while longer. And when I feel confident that I've gotten as much of the atmospheric air out of the tube as I can, I'll go ahead, strike an arc, and begin this welding process. Well, a few hours of welding later and Russ's intake tube is now one piece. So obviously I still need to make at least one cut. Actually I need to make two cuts, but I'll need to cut the straight section somewhere after I measure kind of the depth of the receiver, the mating portion of the air filter. And once I have that dimension, I'll know how long I need to make this little leg right here. Once that is done, I'll flip this around, tack this side on, and I'll need to trim a little bit off of this side just to get a little bit more adequate clearance to his, it's either the coolant overflow or something along those lines. But right now the filter, the flange on the filter sits a little bit too close to that, and I have the ability to move the intake back, so that's the way that I'll accomplish that. But overall, this didn't come out too badly. Not very much color in it at all. And this five inch tube, not only does it take a long time to weld, but you have to be really careful with your gas coverage on it as you have just so much length of weld that you're doing and the piece is very likely to get heat built up in it and therefore equate to color. But I'm pretty happy with the way that it came out. So I'll go ahead now, get the straight sections kind of squared away, and then this will be another piece that's wrapped up on Russ's project. Well, it's time to climb the ladder and see what Russ's intake looks like. So obviously 
Russ's Mark IV is stacked on top of my daily BMW. Reason for this is today, and this is a week or two before you guys will see this, but there is a pretty serious and pretty significant thunderstorm with the possibility of tornadoes that is due to come through my area later today. So I wanted to get my BMW inside as this car was my dad's. It's a pretty meaningful vehicle to me and I had to make the decision to either get this car inside or my truck inside and I opted to get the BMW in. And it's kind of weird having to make that decision as to which vehicle to sacrifice if hail or something like that comes through. But that being said, everything is good here right now and even better now that Russ's intake is a wrap. So let me get one more step up here. And that is what we are looking at. So again, I managed to keep just about all of the color out of the intake tube. It looks really cool, fits the filter, has clearance to this tank right here, which is why I was talking about cutting that straight leg down on it before. But that is a really good focal point and aesthetic piece for this car, in addition to being the air inlet for the whole combustion process and uh, turbo to do its thing. Well, we made it through the storm in one piece, and now it's time to get back to work on Russ's car. So now that the intake tube is completed, I can shift my focus and my efforts to building the hot side intercooler tube. So this tube thankfully will not be comprised of any pie cuts. I have mandrel elbows that I'll be using for it. And this 90 degree one right here is what I'll be using to put the first bend out of the compressor outlet into place. So this should be pretty straightforward and pretty simple. All that I need to do to start is to put that bend in place, figure out where it needs to be cut to get the track that I'm looking for with it. And then the welding begins once again. The lower section of Russ's hot side intercooler tube is completed, and this is the more complex of the two pieces that this intercooler tube will be comprised of. So this 
side over here goes into the coupler that goes into the inlet of the intercooler. And this is the mating side that the piece that the compressor outlet mates to will attach to. So everything's purged, everything's nice, no significant colors throughout. And at this point in time, I can reinstall this tube into the car and begin figuring out how I'm going to craft the other section of this tube. We're going to finish this video by finishing the engine bay fab work on Russ's Supra. So what that entails is finishing the second wastegate recirculation. And I have the first portion of that sitting here purging, getting ready for me to weld it. So this is the beginning of the slip joint. And I'll show this in a little bit more detail in a few minutes, but first I'm going to weld this joint right here that fits the receiver cup onto this piece of tubing and then I'll coat the piece of tube, fit it onto the downpipe and all of that. So let's go ahead and get this weld knocked out and then we can move on to the rest of it, kind of the time consuming, coping, fitting and all of that and get this portion of the project wrapped up. part of Russ's second wastegate recirculation is now completed. And this is what it looks like. So it's welded nicely to the rest of the downpipe and we have our slip joint right here. So the way that this works, I took a little section of the inch and three quarter straight tubing that I have to do the rest of this tube and welded it or slid it and sleeved it inside of the actual slip joint itself then coped it and welded it to the downpipe. And the way that this works is with this stub, it slides down into here, kind of like so. And the where this section of tube that's coped and everything sits on the inside of this will act as a stop for this tube stub. So this slides into here and you can fasten them together a couple different ways. I initially bought a, uh, the spring and spring tab assemblies, but in looking at this more and how tight the confines are to assemble all of this, I'm going to nix the idea of using the spring tabs and all of that in favor of just using a T-bolt clamp or something along those lines. So the clamp will go around this section where it's slotted and we'll squeeze all this together and it will hold the recirculation tube into the slip joint receiver here. 
and that should create a nice leak proof seal for him that still allows this front wastegate recirculation tube to be semi easily removable. So now that all this is squared away, I can reinstall the downpipe back into the car for good at this point in time. And surprisingly, with this stub sticking off, the downpipe still does fit and it's still able to be installed from the top of the engine bay, which is pretty nice. So I'll get that reinstalled and then we can begin building the other wastegate recirculation tube. And just like that, all of the engine bay fabrication work on Russ's car is completed. So it's a little bit difficult to see with the intake back in, but I couldn't wait to see what everything looks like together. But down in there, if I zoom in especially, you guys can see that front wastegate recirculation tube right there that snakes its way down around underneath of the manifold. And I left this pocket right there open so Russ will have a little bit easier time running his oil return from the turbo back to the pan. So down underneath, let me grab a flashlight actually. So down underneath, you can see, again if I zoom in, the tube and how it runs down into the side of the downpipe down in there. Works out really nicely and this tube it's very easy to install will be very easy to remove as well and again like i said earlier just using a t-bolt clamp to hold everything in place that'll be a really good way to make this work and most importantly for russ or in uh, russ's case and for russ's benefit there won't be any soot coming out of any of these dump tubes to dirty up this beautiful engine bay so with the intake tube, the hot side intercooler tube, and the second wastegate recirculation all knocked out and finished at this point in time, I think that's a good point or a good place to end this video. So really there is not very much left to do on this car, just the mid pipe, and that will have its own few bits and a few complexities that will be involved with that. But we will cross that bridge or those bridges in the next episode and uh, I'm really happy with the way that this car is coming together and I can't wait for us to see it <laughs> with all of this all of these new parts and all of this work here after he brought it down is kind of a blank slate but with that being said let's go ahead and end the video 
So thank you guys, as always, for tuning in, for coming on all these different adventures with me, for coming along on this crazy project and everything that it has entailed. I've had a lot of fun with this, and it isn't often that I get to work with this much titanium on somebody else's car. I've done it a few times on my own, but to have somebody else that the bug has bit them <laughs> as, uh, as deeply and ferociously as it has Russ for this, I hope that he really appreciates everything, and I hope that he really likes all the work that has gone into this. So thank you guys again for coming along on all of this. I hope that you have enjoyed the process. hope you have learned some things, and we still have a little bit to go. So until then, that will be the end of this one. So as always, be sure to subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment, check out the website for manifolds, for merch, for all things good that way, and I will see you all in the next episode.